So um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm delighted to, to welcome everybody to this first session of our UCD uh, School of Agriculture and Food Science uh, Research Seminar Series. So I'm Deirdre O'Connor, and I'm also from the, the School of Agriculture and Food Science, and I'll be the, the chair of uh, today's event. So we can see from the list of participants that we have external as well as, as in-house um, contributors and participants, so I'm delighted to, to, to welcome them. Um, so this research series is, is organised and hosted by our school's uh, Research and Innovation Committee, uh, which is chaired by our colleague, Professor Tommy Boland. Uh, so the aim of the research series is really to communicate the kind of the wide spectrum of, of research that's going on uh, across the school and to, to really bring it to the, the widest audience uh, possi uh, possible. So today is the first in a series of, of four seminars and we'll be bringing you details of, of subsequent um, seminars throughout the, the, the term. So we'll, we will keep you posted on that. Um, so for our first seminar in, in this series, we're delighted to uh, introduce a, a, an external and an internal colleague. So Professor uh, Burhanu Kuma from Walaita Soto University in, in Ethiopia and Associate Professor uh, Pat Gibbons, who is Director of the, the, the Centre for Humanitarian Action here at, at UCD. So the focus is on the university and indeed the school's uh, contributions to the sustainable development goals uh, and specifically the focus of our speakers contribution today uh, will be on their EU funded research program, specifically funded under the EU Horizon 2020 program, which is called Building Resilience Through Education or BRTE for, for short. So that is a partnership between UCD and um, Walaita Soto University in Ethiopia, a uh, concern worldwide, um, and a, a number of other partners, which the, the course of which will be explained uh, in the in the presentation. Um, so I think without further ado, we will allow the, the, the presentations to, to continue. Uh, and the format will be that each of the, the speakers will speak for about 20 minutes, uh, and that will be followed by a, a Q&A session. Um, and we aim to finish with, uh, within the hour. So, Barhanu, I might hand over to, to you to, to begin with. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for a nice introduction. Uh, I would like to thank also uh, UCD for giving me this opportunity to share uh, my experience. So, my presentation is Building Resilience experience and lesson from uh, building resilience uh, project uh, so i will uh, uh, go through it so uh, as all of us know we have uh, sustainable development goals so these goals are uh, put uh, globally and then uh, each country uh, works toward attaining it in line with the sustainable development goals Ethiopian government also internalized it and then uh, developed uh, a number of policy and the strategy to uh, and then operationalizing them uh, like agricultural development led industrialization policy education uh, and training for, uh, policy for all growth and uh, transformation policy policy uh, accelerated and uh, and a number of policies and then uh, besides to uh, government, non-governmental organization also are operating in Ethiopia and then also in Walaita. Uh, uh, we, uh, but uh, when we see and if, uh, look at the, the attempts in terms of resilience, uh, we came uh, to realize that their approaches are more of adaptive and uh, uh, absorptive, and then uh, when on the other hand, when we see uh, uh sustainable development goal uh, nine it 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 says build uh, build, build resilience in perspective promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization so uh when we look at uh this one and then see the the attempt so far then uh, this uh, uh goal calls for uh, uh transformative resilience uh, resilience uh, which is also very important and which requires the partnership of local 
and then uh, the international universities together to work and then uh, realize the, 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 the goals. So uh, these calls for understanding of the, the, the local context, understanding of their setup, and then empowering them to be resilient. Then uh, in line with this, uh, uh, as well as the university, we want to transform, uh, contribute to transform economy from less productive to productive sector. And then we have already uh, teacher centered, but we want to transform that one into uh, student centers. Uh, our teaching system is more of uh, 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 talk and the chalk system. So we want to transform that one into uh, e-learning. So uh, transformative resilience in, in the university is also very important. Then uh, we, why, why transformative, uh, transformative resilience in Walaita? Uh, when we look at Walaita, Walaita by itself is a people, it is a name, it's a language. Uh, Walaita is located 330 kilometers south of Addis Ababa, the capital city. You can see here on the map. Uh, then uh, more than 80% of Walaita population uh, depend of, or depends on agriculture, which is traditional, red-fed, labor-intensive. And then Walaita has uh, uh, forecasted the population of more than 5 million. Uh, it's, it's subdivided into 16 rural districts and six urban then its total land holding is uh, uh, 4,511. And out of this 35% is lowland, which is uh, 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 climate uh, affected area. Then 35% uh, is middle, and then 9% is highland. So uh, the average land holding is uh, uh, less than 0.5 hectare. We have 5% uh, per house. Uh, and 2.9% population annual growth, and it's densely populated. And the details are also can be can be observed uh, obtained from the links. So uh, you can see from the picture, this is a typical traditional uh, uh, house of Walaita. You can look at the, the, the next picture, and uh, the, the farmer is having the uh, traditional uh, equipment for for uh, for agriculture, and also insect-based agriculture uh, in dry lands. So generally, uh, the area is uh, uh, prone to uh, climatic issue. And then the people are uh, most of the time uh, affected by this and they are not resilient. It's not because they are not incapable, uh, but because of uh, conditions that are uh, uh, over their, uh, their control. So uh, because of this, Olaita experienced a number of famines uh, in 18, 1984, uh, between uh, 4,000 uh, to 1,200 Ethiopia generally died. Then uh, we had insect disease, which also caused a number of uh, challenge, hunger, hunger and the food, uh, food uh, shortage in the area. And as you saw, 35% of its, its location is uh, climatic, uh, uh, it cannot receive adequate and available rate. So having this one, then uh, building resilience uh, through education pro projects came into existence. And then uh, it, it is based on uh, the saying of Nelson Mandela, education, the most powerful weapon, which can uh, use to, enhance, to, to change the world. Then uh, taking this one and uh, uh, lying on a sustainable development goal line and then taking uh, sustainable development goal into, into, into action to provide, uh, to ensure inclusive equ equitable education and promote lifelong learning for, uh, for all. Then uh, UCD uh, partner with uh, Walaita Sondo University uh, to carry out ex post evaluation of co concerns, 25 years engagement in the motorway de Walaita. Then uh, the outcome uh, showed, as I said, uh, is more of absorptive and adaptive capacity, then uh, uh, it, it really requires further intervention to transform uh, the livelihood of the, the, the society. Then uh, without of uh, when we are thinking the potential uh, institution is Walaita Sondo University, then uh, uh, the university was established on 24 uh, March 2007, it's uh, uh, 15 years. Uh, so it took only 801 uh, uh, students. Then uh, currently it has uh, three main campus, the main campus, 
then Otona teaching a referral campus, uh, Dauro, another catchment, another zone. So the university is scattering teaching, learning, and research in these two zones with more than uh, nearly 7 uh, million population. And uh, it, it has pro 11 uh, uh, programs, uh, college and the school, 58 departments and six PhD uh, uh, degrees. The university is categorized as applied university and uh, with center of excellency, technology led agriculture. Agriculture, uh, the, the livelihood is for more than 80% is agriculture. And the university graduated 46,000 so far and now over 38 active students. Uh, yet the teaching staff, uh, when we look at uh, the PhD holders are less than 6%. However, the still university uh, has a motto of uh, making the knowledge or uh, knowledge in practice. So applying the, the knowledge skills obtained through uh, the university as well as through interaction. So having this thing, the BRT uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, project uh, conceptualized, it went all these steps through uh, building trust and then uh, going through mutual understanding. Then it was then kicked off uh, in Wolaita, 28 uh, November, uh, uh 2017 then uh these are activities that you can see the pictures kick of meetings uh, at walaita then after that one to pro to to uh, improve infrastructure then uh, five individuals were uh, selected they came here and they worked with uc counterparts and developed the strategy then uh vice presidents of walaita Sordo university came here this is because the, uh, the, the once they know the and understand the context, they they give uh, full support to the project implementation. Following that one, 17 educational and more, um, modular team also came here, worked on different modules and then policy guide strategies with UCDs. Then also uh, uh, through the projects in, in order to smooth uh, functioning of uh, proper and timely uh, functioning of the project. The project uh, purchased these two vehicles through concern. Then we have uh, 14 PhD students uh, on work package three. Uh, they are almost coming to their uh, their last stage. We also brought uh, the new uh, vice presidents uh, to UCD to to expose themselves, get get uh, details and understand the context, and then uh, support and implement back the new uh, things in the university. So so to transform it. Then uh, we also brought enterprise uh, and incubation teams and uh, to Carlo, and then they worked there for three months and developed uh, a strategy for incubation uh, hub. Then uh, certain Syrian academic staff also came for uh, 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 gui developing guidelines for uh, research-based PhDs. They worked on with with UCD. And they developed that one, and then based on that, then the guidelines were developed. Then, lastly, uh, seven PhD supervisors, including me, we are here now uh, to to uh, to help students progress to to uh, finish their uh, studies. Uh, then, this one is the state transfer one assessment, which was conducted in Walaita. So, team of uh, academia from UCD and Carlo went to Walaita. And then they visited the uh, different parts and at the same time carried out the state transfer assessment. This one, uh, the, the Zen ambassador visited Walaita. Then uh, also discussion with zonal uh, offices and visit to concern sites also were done. Uh, then uh, a new project, uh, worth of nearly 400,000 uh, euro uh, also was was also gained uh, three of these uh, when they went there and then carried out uh, baseline assessment and on the base of this they wrote and then won, won this and then we believe that this uh, BRT also contribute for that beside to this we have certain uh, students each of one each of them are required to publish three and the total uh, 39 publication uh, so far one publication produced outside of this phd student then uh, a number of students also uh, submitted and then they participated and presented their uh, work in conferences. And given this, this uh, are some of the achievements, we still uh, 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 
the, that achievement was not with with all things in place but uh during the the implementation phases we found that there there are analysts in walaita in 2018 june uh, uh there was uh, when uh, this uh, uh mary uh, and uh sorry when these guys were there uh, on 2018 there were an arrest uh, and then uh, that also disturbed for for a while then war in northern part of ethiopia also impacts on the implementation of drt covid 19 uh, issue the global pandemic also uh, contributed to it, it and these are the major uh, challenges but there are also small specific challenges uh, we face in the implementation of uh, BRT project. Uh, this, these are some of the the highlights of the uh, the experiences and, and then lessons that we we can learn from uh, BRT project implementation. Thank you. Okay, Brahanu, thank you very much, and and thank you for being so prompt on time. And um, as you may have gleaned, we have a, a few little technical challenges here, so we're going to see a, a change in, in personnel uh, just in a minute. Uh, I also just want to, to remind you that the, the format for the, the rest of the seminar is we have a, um, another similar timed presentation from, from um, Pat Gibbons, who's an associate professor here in, in the school and director of the, the Center for, for Humanitarian Action here, uh, and the principal investigator on, on this uh, bright project and on other EU Horizon 2020 projects, which he may mention. Um, so what we're going to do is Pat will give another uh, presentation again uh, related to, to BRTE for about 20 minutes, then we'll open it up to questions uh, and answers. Um, and if you have questions, if you put them into the, the, the question and answer function on Zoom and we'll, we'll deal with them through, through that. And we aim to finish uh, at about uh, 12 noon. So I'm going to hand you over to, to, to Pat now for, for his contribution. So thank you. And apologies for the, the seat swapping. Okay, thanks, Pat. Thanks a million, Deirdre. Uh, and again, in, in similar fashion to Professor Berhanu, I want to thank you for the opportunity to present the BRT program. And as Berhanu would have pointed out, it is a Horizon 2020 program. It is worth about 2.3 million. The partners are UCD and related Sodo centrally. Um, it is building on work of concern worldwide. And we're also engaging with the Institute of Technology, Carlo Future Analytics, a private company, and NOAA. I want to present something of the philosophy and the thinking behind the project and locate the project within the sustainable development goals. I think it's good to remind us that we have this shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet now and into the future. Although the BRTE predates the sustainable development goals, I think we can couch an awful lot of the work we're doing within those goals. Reminding you all, there are 17 of the sustainable development goals and what is, what is fundamentally important about these is the understanding of the importance for countries themselves to drive the realization of their goals. So as we see in Ireland, where we're trying to address issues around our carbon emissions, the same will go for Ethiopia. And, and will I have been part of that bigger Ethiopia, which is a country of 120 million people. I think it's the, the, the slogan that we have now so well become accustomed to in COVID-19, this idea of none of us are safe until all of us are safe, I think is equally relevant when it comes to the sustainable development goals. And there is an onus on us all to try and support one another to realize the sustainable development goals. 
Within these goals, there are 169 targets, and I will refer to many of these targets in the course of the presentation. Building the rationale for UCD's engagement, I want to share with you a quote from Rising to the Future. According to UCD, we are facing an age of unprecedented opportunity and challenge. Society is being transformed by digital and communications technology and is itself transforming the very environment which supports all life on earth. From a communications and transport perspective, society is more connected than ever before, but requires new ways of working together and resolving differences. I think that this is what we're trying to do. I, I want to introduce the new way BRTE is trying to work. From the very beginning, I would say on close reflection, higher education institutions are probably among the most inequitable of all sectors globally. When you look at the dominance of the global north over the global south, and there has been a tendency traditionally for universities from the global north to bypass their southern peers or counterparts. And I think we're trying to address this problem, taking our own situation a hundred years on in our own independence. I think we are proud of the work that UCD had in fostering a sense of Irish identity. And I think the same should be true within many of these developing countries, that academia has a big role to play in shaping and formulating policies that will go a long way to agreeing the sustainable development goals. I think we have to critically also look at UCD and as we perceive ourselves as this global research intensive university. The motto from UCD Global is bringing the best of the world to UCD or, or to Ireland. And we've been doing this and you see this in the number of international students and indeed the growing number of staff working in, on globalization. And I would hope as well, with the help of the likes of Wolaita Sodo and Addis University, we are also improving our, our internationalization of our curriculum so that we can bring uh, the best of Ireland, including our culture to the world and contribute in that. But I would challenge the fact that we have to do that by respecting the intelligentsia and, and and academia in these respective countries. So the BRT approach from the very beginning is to support Wolaita Sodo University in its role to shape a more resilient Wolaita. Resilience from a humanitarian and a development perspective acknowledges components of enabling society to be able to absorb the ongoing recurring shocks and stresses where Wolaita is all too familiar with these, whether they be climate related, political related, economic related difficulties. It is also about helping them to adapt uh, ongoing management techniques in order to leave them less vulnerable to ongoing stresses, shocks and risks in the area. But it's also, as, as Professor Bahanu said, about supporting the transformation process. And I'd like to, sh to show you how we're trying to do this in BRTE. One thing I think at, at the center of the BRTE philosophy is the whole idea of mutual gain. We see UCD as, of course, we are nonprofit, but we're not a charity. As academics, there has to be some game for UCD to engage with Wolaita Sodo so that the relationship can be sustainable. And I'd like to, to show you how we can learn a lot from working with Wolaita in trying to establish complementarity in what we have to offer and what Wolaita Sodo have to offer. So we have started to work and we, we're working closely with IT Carlo. IT Carlo is very much aligned with this notion of a university as uh, providing direction, education and research for regional development in the southeast of Ireland. Like Wolaita Soda University that has similar 
a similar challenge in the Walaita zone and the neighboring zones as presented by Walaita Sodo. So we have been working very closely with Carlo in order to strengthen these adaptive and transformative capacities. A, a closer analysis of the BRTE would show that we've tried to develop three work packages, operational work packages that shape the way we are working. The first of these is looking at establishing an enabling working environment. We all know that with working with partners, the ongoing challenges for us to be able to, to be able to share degrees, share modules, uh, work within the different systems. And this was very, this is very central to the way we work. At the moment, there is huge advant advances happening with our relationships with peer institutions in the global north around technological transfer, around uh, new uh, innovations. All, an awful lot of that is not accessible to universities like Walaita Sodo that has limited internet connections, limited library facilities, limited um, registry facilities. So we're working to see, is there a way, we're not trying to impose UCD on Walaita, but help them to, 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 to be able to engage in, in more recent developments. Our second work package is about shared educational products, looking at how we could potentially share our modules. Thirdly, we look at innovative research, and I'll talk to you and, and, and build the rationale for agriculture to drive this. But I think at the center of all of this is a change in direction. It's, not, it's, it's a move from the modernization thesis where we know what Walaita or Ethiopia needs. It's about a, a shared understanding or a respect that Walaita Sodo knows what, what they need and sharing this with how we perceive these could be developed. And, and for example, if I, at the moment we are progressing 14 PhD studies, as Berhanu said, the way this worked was Walaita Sodo came up with 60 proposals. Those were shared among the schools and colleges in UCD and Carlo. And then we started to look to see where, there were, where were there areas that we might have some level of complementarity. So we were bringing together the felt needs of Walaita Sodo, the perceived needs from UCD and Carlo, and hopefully we've arrived at 14 research projects that meet with the derived needs for, for the area. If you go into Walaita Soda, you'll be met with this picture. And it's, it's great when you go to rural UCD has, has a prominence. We're really very valued members within, within Walaita. But as Berhanu said, Walaita is an applied university. It's mandated to deliver tertiary education and research. And it's a quite new university, as he said, from 2007. We have set out to try and strengthen and build the adaptive and transformative capacities. And when we start to look at this, the rationale for, for us in agriculture to be driving this it is very much played when you look at the population in Walaita. 80% of the population are, are dependent on the primary agriculture. And an awful lot of our research projects you will see are in are, are linked or aligned with SDG 1, uh, 2, 12, and 13. But we're also trying to look at transformation and the need to go beyond the primary sector towards the secondary and tertiary sector, sectors. And we can only assume, as aligned with Walaita Sodo, that this industrialization will be agriculture and food based, as will the services that are linked. And you will see from the research that we're undertaking as well, people have health needs, they have educational needs, they have uh, political needs to be able to engage in a more democratic society. They have issues around challenging their own issues around gender, around uh, lifelong learning, these kind of issues 
they they have many of the same needs that we have. So this links us to a, a closer look to show some of both the, the studies and the research that are ongoing. Uh, I think one of the one of the I have grouped all of our research into two categories: one adapt, adaptive measures and two transformative. Adaptive measures, again, taking from the definition in resilience, it's about looking at the small improvements that that the Wallace society is making to support a better or a more improved management and implementation practices to make the society less vulnerable to the risks and, and shocks and stresses. And uh, some of the projects that are involved here, I, I just mentioned them very briefly. You can see how closely aligned they are with a lot of the work that is going on here in agriculture and in other faculties in UCD. Climate change and farm households, livelihood and vulnerability ad adaptations been undertaken by Professor Kinsella and Almas uh, in, in Walaita. Methodology to track livelihood adaptations to try and help people, people uh, respond to vulnerabilities. I'm dealing with working on this program. The, the role of communications in ensuring sustainable development in Ethiopia, focusing on SDG 1 and 2 by Professor Wims and Teshele. Characterization of Campylobacter associated with childhood diarrhea, undertaken by Anton and uh, oh, what is your name? I, I, I'm, I, I come back to it in in, in the, the faculty of, of Marguerite in the in the faculty of, of medicine, fattening practices and feeding practices for muscle composition, been undertaken by Amisto and Professor Frank Monaghan, integrating national development initiatives with local needs, been undertaken by. Salagna Maitra and Nigatu, beyond numbers uh, of visits, looking at antenatal care being undertaken by Nuguse and Professor Mary Codd. Uh, but as well as this, we're trying to work with Walaita so that they can be leaders in a transformation. Looking at the sign there and Henry, Henry Ford, he was, he says, if I had asked my customers what they wanted, they'd probably have said a faster horse. One thing that we're trying to do in this project is to try and support the university to be a leader in transformation. And we're not trying to introduce new ideas, but we're trying to adopt a similar approach to the way transformation, we perceive transformation happened in Ireland. An awful lot is based on our diaspora, who see new things, who look at new ways of thinking, and then apply it back to Ireland, where we are so conscious of our culture, our different ways of doing things. So what we're trying to do is give as many people from Wallaita the opportunity to see how we are working, and then work along with them to try and support them to employ programs that are more relevant in their situations. Artificial intelligence, trying to engage in a situation where Wallace Soto can exploit the opportunities of technology. Women entrepreneurs, working Deirdre O'Connor along with Alamayu, looking at how women can drive enterprise. Entrepreneurial universities, Temeskin and Martin Marr in uh, Carlo IT, early childhood care, Declan Fahey in education, together with Twelde in uh, Walaita, and then the role of cultural heritage and sustainable tourism. You have Afa work in Walaita, along with Clare Cave in UCD. So you can see the range a lot agriculture focus, but it has also given us a new way to engage with schools and colleges around UCD. As we come towards the end, I would like you to, to realize that we're not, we are not profit, but we're not, we're not a charity. 
UCD is gaining a lot from this. We're going to get 13 PhDs. We have around nearly a quarter of our 39 peer reviewed publications already realized. And an awful lot of papers are currently submitted on the PhDs. We have established institutional partners within the schools and between the schools in UCD that will form the platform for new research proposals. And I would think that this kind of approach is lending itself to brain gain as opposed to brain drain. Rather than us taking the best brains and bringing them here and staying in Ireland, what we are trying to do is learn more along with our peers in Walaita and giving us a better understanding of the challenges of how we work there. What's going to come out of this? Just looking at the two pictures here on the slide. The first of them is looking at work like AFAWORK is looking at some of the cultural heritage in the area, but looking at it's important for Walaita to be proud of their traditions, to maintain their identity as they go forward. So while one wants transformation and, and adaptation, one shouldn't lose sight of where you have come from. The second picture you see here is a recent center that was built in Walaita Soda to show how we can share lectures. You see some of our colleagues here looking within the room, and this is set up with the internet so that we could actually host the lecture here and in Walaita. But there's other centers like those to track smallholder adaptations, business innovation hubs being established based on certain models adapted from the Irish and the, especially with the Carlo model that is very closely associated to regional development in the area data centers for e-learning and research, and new investigative areas that, that, that are lending itself to the, the cultural and societal context within, within Walaita. Where are we going from here? I think these pictures will, will, will tell you. When you go to Walaita, a lot of our colleagues has vis have visited, as Barhan, who said, the, the food is great, the climate is great. The people are so welcoming. The second picture you see there is actually Bedessa, which is the center of Damage Way, there, where we had where the famine was in 1984, where we see colleagues visiting the area and showing how progress has made from the work of concern. And we hope to be able to leverage that and work and bring it forward. Believe it or not, that at the bottom is not a picture of Ireland, but it's looking at Walaita. There are certain similarities in the area. But where we're taking it from here, I think we've had a hard time in the last three or four years. You've seen what, what COVID has done. You've had political unrest in Ethiopia. But yet the relationship and this model has helped us to work through it. And I think our, our partnership has grown, our trust has grown, and it is great through the PhDs, the relationships that have been established between colleagues in departments and schools. Increasingly, we're, we're seeing organizations like Chagask or uh, private sector organizations seeing a potential and a supportive role. I would hope moving beyond the notion of just uh, corporate social responsibility, but towards a shared value where they could get engaged and support Walaita in this transformative process. And I am really keen to see Berhanu and his colleagues have done a, a massive job in, in looking at how we have developed our student-centered approach, our challenges with with Athena Swan, our challenges to make our institution as well as society more fair and equitable. And it's fantastic to see how these people are taking these on board. Sorry, Deirdre, just as I finish, I think the approach we're taking is not the easiest way. It's probably easier to go out there and do two people or do for them rather than how it is to do with them. But I think doing with them is going to be a more sustainable venture. And I want to take this opportunity to thank 
everybody in Walaita, but more so my colleagues in UCD that have given that extra mile to share the time, the space with the PhD students, with our colleagues as they come here, because I hope we're moving in the right direction, but I suppose UCD might give you more thanks if we were, if we were partnering with Harvard or with uh, Cambridge or with Oxford, but I think the impact you are having is greater in Walaita. Okay. Thank you. Pat, thanks so much for that. And thanks for staying exactly on, on time also. Um, we'd just like to open it up now for, for some Q&A. And obviously, if you want to submit uh, a question, just please do so through the, the, the questions and answers um, function on, on Zoom. Um, so I think specifically, maybe for the first question, just to address it to, to both of you uh, sequentially, and then a second question that's come in, I think relates more to, to, to UCD, but I think Verhanu might also have some um, views on, on, on this also. So the first question really is about you know something we can't escape and um, which is the whole impact of, of COVID. Uh, you know maybe some of the specifics and, and, and one suspects the, the impacts have played out very differently in, in, in both countries obviously and in both in institutions um, but presumably it had a very profound effect on, on how uh, people did their business in, in both situations. So could you just maybe uh, address how the BRT program kind of had to had to face and then had to address even from a, a technological or an infrastructural uh, or indeed just a logistical travel and so on perspective, um, you know, how both institutions managed that process to begin with, uh, but then managed it with the added drama of, of, of COVID. So, uh, Berhanu, would you like to, to start then and, and maybe Pat to, to contribute also? Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, as uh, uh, Pat was explaining, uh, one of the work package of BRT was uh, to support Olaita Sodo to, to have uh, improved uh, uh, infrastructure setup, which one of which was uh, the ICT uh, setup. So, while uh, the university was uh, uh, working with uh, uh, the UCDs at the same time, Carlo team to really improve the, the structure down there. Then this COVID issue came into, and then uh, once uh, COVID came into uh, existence, then uh, that that came uh, the, the national agenda. So Ethiopia also uh, moved uh, aggressively. Not only Ethiopia, uh, also the uh, higher education also moved aggressively, and then. At the same time, Walaita Sodo uh, also moved aggressively and then uh, uh, put those infrastructures in place. So uh, because of those uh, issues, then uh, even during uh, COVID issues, I mean, COVID times, then we were having postgraduate programs using the uh, internet, the upgrade system. So uh, then that also helped us to communicate, frequently communicate with uh, PART and other uh, the RT uh, uh, partner. So, uh, yeah, sometimes you you may uh, face challenge, but that uh, that really uh, pushes everyone to think about and then come up with a solution. And nowadays, uh, because of this COVID issue, not only in the in the university but in in the in the town also, uh, that these network systems are now uh, better. So. Uh, you can have uh, Wi-Fi with uh, with better uh, uh, gigabytes are also installed in, in individual houses. So uh, uh, using those uh, uh, efforts, then we were able to really cope up with uh, the COVID issues and then uh, push uh, or progress the BRT uh, to, to this level. Oh, you're, you're on mute, Deirdre, but I, 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 I'm a good lip reader. Uh, so two years yeah, in, still I, struggling I, with mute. I, I suppose COVID, COVID challenged us to see how resilient BRTE was. So we had to undertake a, a whole series of adaptations in, in our program. I think what is what was great about it was that the EU gave us that extra 14 months. So the project has moved from an end date of 
what was to be last October. So we have an extension up until the end of this calendar year. I think secondly, I, and again, I, I, I want to, to thank my, my colleagues in UCD and, and in, in, in Walaita Soda, they were ready to, to adapt. So like Deirdre, even in your own case, we, we, when, as was initially planned, we were supposed to do stage transfers in Walaita for a second visit out there. But we were fortunate enough that we were able to do these online. And so there was adaptations allowed within Central. So we were negotiating the whole time with people on these, on these particular issues. But there's no doubt that the flexibility was greater as well on behalf of Walaita Soda. Our colleagues are over here. I think there's, there's still a certain amount of reservation of people going into a place where there's less vaccinations, less support, and I think we have to take these things into consideration, it's like people's health are, are most important. So we've gone through a certain amount of adaptations. While not perfect, I think we've been, been able to handle this, but, but it has been great. I think the trust, the reliability, the recognition, appreciation on behalf of both institutions helped us to survive the, the COVID and even grow stronger out of it. You're on mute, there. Yeah. No, I'm fine. And, and thanks, Pat. And, and as I said, you, you noted it to me as, as a supervisor as well, but just one of the, the issues I thought was really impressive was just, again, during COVID, but the extent to which all of our students had to kind of, you know, react very quickly in terms of how they conducted their research and their field work and so on. So it was, you know, it, it was a massive challenge, I think. And I think, you know, the PhD candidates just responded really, really well uh, to that. Um, Pat, next question, I suppose it's directed at you, but I'd also be interested in, in getting Berhanu's uh, view on this. Um, advice you would give to, to UCD colleagues who want to build partnerships with institutions in, in the global south and what, you know, what, what would be your insights having gone through this process again on a number of, of, of occasions? So maybe Pat first and then uh, Burhan, if you had something to add. I was going to say don't do it, but uh, no, <laughs> I, uh, I, I tell you, it's, it's like, this is something that I think we have been, 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 we think it's fundamental in, in, in where you do. Now, the, the big advice I would say, uh, Deirdre, would be to recognize that this is not a short term thing. Fundamental to this whole process is building trust, is, is getting to know the people. The, the, by the time the BRT started in 2010, 2011, when we were undertaking an ex post evaluation for concern of the area. And as Berhanu pointed out, the outcome of this was that we, we, we insisted, first of all, that we would do it along with a peer institution, hence getting involved with Walaita Sodo. And then we, we worked with people for two or three years and, and no relationship was, was established until the proviso was made and we see how we can work together how we can trust each other, the value systems to see if they're similar. But that first three or four years in building the trust, getting to know the people, uh, seeing where there's opportunities, honesty, reliability, integrity, all of these things were, were fundamental in establishing that trusted relationship. When that is done, I think we, UCD will probably gain as much, if not more, than will later. But it's about letting people know we're going in there with our eyes wide open, what we can gain from it, and, and, and investing in this partnership. It's, 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 a, slow, it's a slow, uh, long process. I, I think it would have to, it would differ in every different situation. Now, this has given us great opportunities, I think, the like even within Ireland, the likes of, of Chagask and other institutions wanting to work with us as well as uh, different uh, private sector organizations. But now Addis University wants to work along with us 
and I think there will it 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 offers up a lot of good opportunities. So I think it's worth it. It's worth investing in it, and I think it 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 just to take it takes time and dedication. Maybe Berhanu, before I, I come to you, because just another question or another comment really, well, question has come in, which I think is very much related to, to that point. And, and again, the two of you might have, have a view on it, um, more so Pat, I suspect, but just the extent to which the, the programme has helped UCD to enhance its own resilience. And as I said, to some extent, I think you've, you've answered it, but maybe just given your comments a few minutes ago, you might like to, to, to comment on that. So you might just see that the last question that came in was the extent to which BRT helped resilient, uh, helped UCD to enhance its resilience. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you, you see, uh, when we look at this sustainable development goals, so uh, it really, uh, uh, Focuses ending poverty and then accessing education to to all uh, and then uh, also the issue of climate and then there are uh, so many and the, this uh, the achievement of these uh, sustainable goals really requires uh, each one's effort. So in the globe or generally we are seated because whether we are in the south or in the in the, in the north we are educated we call we are educated and we are mandated to to really contribute to uh, shaping the world and then uh, reducing uh, uh, climate issue and making uh, the world conducive to mankind so if this is the case then uh, uh, academia in in the universities are mandated in teaching also they are mandated in carrying innovative researches and then also transferring those technologies so uh, as 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 part of our duty, uh, in most cases we are we are uh, focusing on teaching learning issues, and then uh, uh, we are not devoting most of our time to to serving the the societies. Uh, so we have to rethink about uh, this issue. Uh, the, the knowledge and the skills we gain uh, in classroom must be applied, and then it must contribute to the society if we want to really. Uh, achieve sustainable development goals. So uh, if this is the case, then uh, rethinking also is uh, individually is also very important. Rethinking as an institution is also uh, important. Rethinking as, as a group is very important. Then unless otherwise we rethink and then uh, uh, we, we complement one another or we pull uh resources skills and uh, and and then uh, existing things together and work together for the betterment then we will not achieve sustainable development and with with this regard this academia has i think uh i can i can say the major role and to 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 shape and direct also including politicians and others so uh I, I go for rethinking of, 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 of doing our business uh, to really uh, help others. So, sorry, sorry, Deirdre, if I could just yeah. add one thing. Sure. I think uh, one, one of the reasons or, or the reasons why it might have been successful, I, I think is complementarity between the, the colleagues. Myself and, and Berhanu are coming from similar backgrounds, agriculture or agricultural economics. But I was I was lecturing there the other day with my, my own master's students and they were looking at localization and the importance of partnerships between INGOs and local NGOs. And they found in the research it was very important to have a focal point that facilitates or, or serves to strengthen partnership. And this is an important link in the chain which we often forget is a guy called Dejan. <laughs> Dejan is the guy who does the work. But, but Dejan, Dejan is UCD. He's, he's what we call a, 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 a black Varengi. The, the Varengi is the white and then whatever. So he's UCD, but he's also Ethiopian. And, this, and, and that link, that management of the partnership. I don't speak Amharic. It's important for us to get the access, but I speak to Dejan and he tells me what's going on. And Dejan, he, he can speak the language to Berhanu. He's a fundamental component in, in, in this. And I think from that management, going back to the question, 
what would you advise somebody? I would advise someone that can give the time, the effort, has the knowledge of both systems and a vested interest. Dejan himself is doing a PhD on the internationalization of education. So there's a mutual, there's a gain for him as well. And that has to be there. It's, it's common sense, really. Uh, just a, 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 an interesting question just coming in, I suppose, about you know, the dissemination, if you like, from the, the, the work and the practice of, of the, the BRTE program, which is really about the, and, and maybe Berhanu might um, speak to this initially, um, the extent to which um, other universities in Ethiopia have, have heard of, are aware of, and, you know, are maybe ready to adopt the, the BRTE approach or, or framework. What would be, both of you, what would be your thinking on that? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, 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 actually, uh, uh, we 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 think BRT is an innovative uh, uh, because uh, on the one hand uh, we we really uh, help uh, support Olaita Swodo University to have uh, uh, educated. Uh, I mean. Uh, staff and then that will go again back to the society and then make them and support them uh, to be resilient and also at the same time uh, uh, supporting in the, the issue of uh, infrastructures and then enhancing the uh, scientific and the skill uh, uh, research skills uh, of, of uh, uh, these things uh, so uh, having this uh, we think that this approach can can be uh, a model. We, we think that we it will, will be a model because it's not uh, so far we don't have an approach like this. Uh, uh, projects, especially funded projects, if, if they give, they give for one or two PhDs or master's studies and then they leave it. And then at the same time, uh, some of them uh, who come here to the, the, the developed country some of them might not return back uh, and then support the development effort. So uh, there are a, a lot of components in BRT that we think it will be a, a model for, for Ethiopian at the same time Africa University. But we have not yet uh, uh, finalized it. Uh, we see the, the mo mo uh, it's, its modelness, but uh, uh, we believe that uh, once we are done, uh, that will be uh, shared and then we will we are planning to have a international workshop to share the the methodological issues the new findings its innovativeness and then how it is contributing to brain gain than brain drainage so uh, not yet shared because it is in in the process but uh, we have a plan to to share it is it's That's great. Um, Pat, any comment on, on you? Yeah, and, I'm, I'm delighted with, with Berhanu's reply because we were worried uh, about a year ago, the guy who, who originally wrote the BRT program with us, he, he had gone on, he's gone on to, to better things. He became president of the university and he subsequently became minister for higher education in central government. And he was very much pushing the BRTE, probably prematurely until it is properly evaluated. And we were advising, let's step back. Let's look at the, the there's obvious weaknesses. There's obvious challenges. Uh, yes, you look at the publications. They're all peer, peer reviewed uh, journals. We would like to be able to move them to higher levels. There are other issues that we'd like to address. But there, I do genuinely think that the advantages totally outweigh the, the disadvantages, but you'd like there to be a proper evaluation before it is streamlined into, into uh, legislation. But it is, it is very much on the, the desk of the ministers. It is something that people are looking at. And I think that probably in some ways COVID has even helped in that way because they can see localization is the order of the day. I think people realize the importance to build local capacities. And in, in some ways, I, I, do, I do think it is going to lend itself well within 
beyond and even beyond Ethiopia in the coming years. So th this is the job of work we have to do over the next few months as the project comes towards an end. Pat, thanks for that. And in a way, I think you've, you've actually addressed that, that final question, which has, has come in there in relation to just the importance of, of localization and the kind of the, 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 pre, the primacy you, you put on that um, aspect of, of the project. So having said that, I think we are out of time. Uh, I would like to, to thank both of you very much for a really insightful, really informative, very enjoyable um, session, uh, notwithstanding our, our local technical, minor technical difficulties, which we are, are, are glad we overcame. Uh, so also thanks to the, the attendees and for the, the questions that uh, came in. You know, there is the opportunity to, to follow up with um, our speakers and, you know, I think our contact details are, are well flagged. So I think, you know, even offline, I think um, both Pat and Berhanu would be, be happy to engage with people with kind of interest and queries in the in the topic. So again, just on behalf of the, uh, the Research and Innovation Committee at, at UCD, the School of Agriculture and Food Science. So this was our, our inaugural seminar for, for the year. So we will keep you posted of the, the subsequent seminars, which will be run throughout the academic year. Uh, and we just thank you for your engagement and your participation and particular thanks to, to Pat and Berhanu. So thanks a lot. Thank you, dear. Thank you.